This is a story of women, of women who said something must be done and we're the ones to do it. So it's a story of the wonderful Women's Institute, making a difference for the best part of a century. The WI sprang from the advance of women in the early decades of the 20th century, a phenomenon of the modernizing world, a time when women made their voices heard. When you have a nearly quarter of a million ladies shouting together, it's quite a voice, I would say. It was always about working together to make things happen. Anyone who moves to an area and, you know, is looking for something to do is one of the best things you can do to join the WI. The social tradition plus a modern outlook attract the younger generation. And you know what it was all about? Uh, the Jam and the Jerusalem, they say, don't they? But um, I did have a funny suspicion that they were having a great time and I wanted some of that. This is Llanfairpwll in Anglesey where the British WI was founded in 1915 to take wartime action. The old toll house on Thomas Telford's road to Holly Head. The WI meets in an adjoining building. Now the toll house is smartly renovated as a museum and it tells the local story. It began in Stony Creek in Canada in 1897 when um, Adelaide Hoodless, a farmer's wife, lost her fourth child. Uh, he had drunk contaminated milk and uh, he died and uh, she felt, Adelaide felt, that it was time that women had an education. And that is why the WI is an educational organisation. And Earl and Lee joined with her. He was in an agriculture society out there and it was basically through agriculture that this organisation did flourish. And how did it cross the Atlantic? There was a lady member there, uh, Mrs Madge Watt. In 1913 she came to live in Sussex. She did try tirelessly to establish this organisation in England but I'm afraid it failed. Well, she had better luck in Wales. Determined to get women involved in a job of national importance in wartime, growing and preserving food. Richard Stapleton Cotton, a North Wales farmer's leader, met the women of Llanfairpwll and they founded the first WI in Britain with a mission to put food on the nation's tables. The war was a catalyst to all this because they realised that women could contribute a lot towards the war efforts. Uh, there was the looking at um, how to produce food economically and I think women started to come into the fore at that time. Good place to be because it's quite a landmark, isn't it, the Toll House? It is a landmark, and I think these toll houses across Anglesey are quite unique. And now that you've made it into a museum, what sort of things have you got here that you can show me? There's a programme there from 1917. It's also featured on one of these panels. And if you look at that, it's WI number one. Mm -hmm. They number them, so that is unique, because the numbers soon disappeared. <laughs> um, and then there's the first journal that the National Federation brought out, Home and Country, and of course the very important publication, The Grain of Mustard Seed, and that is a factual book, The Minutes, the history from Canada and the minutes, I think it goes up to 1935. From that meeting in Llanfairpwll, the WI grew into the largest women's voluntary organisation in the United Kingdom. In Wales, there are 500 branches and 16,000 members. 
The satisfactions of creative companionship were always at the heart of the WI. When the Second World War broke out, the WI soon joined the action on the home front. Driving a tractor, plowing a furrow, it's not easy. But like making and modeling a dress, it all comes down to concentration and keeping a straight line. As a combination of companionship, community life, and campaigning, the WI became a force of social significance. In Klanvarpuch, the number one group is busier than ever with campaigns and activities. Audrey Jones has been a member since the 1970s, and it's a big part of her life. It has so much to offer. We run courses at the moment. I'm in a yoga class. There's other classes going on in the county, so you can take advantage of all sorts of things. And I do like the campaigning side as well, WI, because that is our voice, really. It is the voice, the campaigning. The first resolution in 1918 was for better housing. Later on, there was campaigning on birth control. Then there was bringing crafts and cookery onto the school curriculum. And if you look at that, it has gone full circle. We are trying to put cookery back on the school curriculum today. Nothing changes, really. At Flangadog in Carmarthenshire, Mary Lynn Haynes Evans couldn't wait to join the local WI. She grew up observing how much her mother loved it. The Flangadog branch was founded in 1925. And this is the bell the president rang. It's got a fantastic ring to it. Beautiful. It's a beautiful bell. Um, and she also gave us um, this ballot box which we do use every year at our annual meeting. So when you look back at all the years you've been in this branch, what do you think you've derived from being in the WI? I, I can't imagine what my life um, would be like if I hadn't become a member, because um, I suppose it shaped me as a person because you know, I learnt at a very young age by going along to meetings how important it was to get on with people. And I realised that early on that the WI had a very strong voice, even from a small branch such as Langadog. Every year, WIs uh, all over the country have the opportunity of voting on which campaign they would want the National Federation of Women's Institutes to work on. So from a small institute, even up to the largest, we have the same voice. For nearly a century, the Women's Institute has raised its significant voice in campaigns. For nurses, for better pay and conditions. For dairy farmers, a better deal for milk production and absolutely vital for people in the countryside, improvements in the postal services on which they depend. We've had campaigns on, on the milk, uh, fair prices for milk, from the honeybees, saving the honeybees, and all manner of campaigns that we've, we've been able to work on as a small institute. So you do reach the people who count. What about the government? We do take every government to task, and we have done on many issues. Um, most recently, um, we've had a campaign on legal aid. If we feel that any proposal or, um, is going to have a detrimental effect on women or their families, then as the largest women's organisation in the country, um, we have a, a civil duty, if you like, to make women's voices heard 
and we take whoever it is to task mm. if we feel that there, there is a need to. And you're doing that with um, the question of mid midwives, there aren't enough of them. No, at our AGM last year we passed um, that we were going to campaign for more midwives. We're in the middle of a baby boom um, at the moment, 700,000 plus babies being born in this country every year. More midwives being trained, but sadly more midwives leaving the service um, and more midwives working part-time. Join us after the break. We're with the brand new glam girls of the WI. Welcome back. We're in Tonteg, Pontypris, with the Glam Girls, the new wave of the WI. Ouch. But the self-defence lessons are popular. The instructor teaches women awareness and caution, how to avoid trouble, and out of this comes confidence. How did it all come about? Um, well. A friend and myself went to a Christmas party, well, a Christmas concert that was being held by one of the local WIs, um, and we came away from there thinking, oh, it's, it's lovely that these ladies get together. We could do with something like that, really. Uh, and my mother-in-law is actually a member of the WI um, locally, and I mentioned it to her, and she said, well, start one yourselves. And we thought, well, OK, we'll give it a go, see if there's any interest. Put a few messages out on Facebook, and it just kind of grew. People were interested. Um, we discovered that there was actually a need. I mean, I think we're all getting older, and our children are getting older, so they're no longer meeting on the schoolyard like we used to, and people are missing that. They're missing that little social interaction, um, and this fills that gap. We're learning different skills um, and inter things that we're interested in, things that our people our age, the women our age are interested in. Like tonight we're doing self-defence, but we're doing flower arranging next month, which is a more traditional sort of thing. We're going to try and do some car maintenance and possibly some plumbing. Um, and it's, it's a chance for us to get together, have a chat, um, which doesn't involve going to the pub and spending lots of money. Pam, you've got a big part in all of this. Yes, I have really. Quite dramatically around Christmas time, Rowena, my daughter in law, suddenly said, We need WI. I said, I'll open one for you. And now she's the president. And I had just finished my advisor training, and this was my first WI that I opened as well. So it's quite special. Um, because nationally, we're beginning to open lots of WIs for younger people, they're calling it New Wave. And uh, we need these young people, you know, to, to step in and follow us behind. Why did you join the Glam Girls? Well, I was getting to an age where I needed to do something for myself, having been a, a mum for many, many years. Um, I, I was quite scared of the thought of joining the WI. Um, because of the, um, the, the jam and jelly sort of uh, brigade. But when they said, no, it's going to be a new generation, I thought, no, OK, I'll give it a try, because I could do with getting out of my comfort zone. They're talking a lot about community these days, aren't they, about how people are changing from being insular um, and when they're moving especially to new um, areas to live, because I'm a native North Wales. But you don't tend to socialise. There aren't the communities in the villages that there used to be. So, so getting into something like this, um, gives you the opportunity to meet people of different backgrounds, different cultures, and um, it, it does bring you together. Is it a little more exciting than when you um, joined? No, <laughs> uh, because one of the things that I've done is sail on a tall ship, and that opportunity wouldn't have come my way if uh, I hadn't belonged to WI. Strangely enough, we're finding that they want what we wanted 30 years ago when we joined. And what did you want 30 years ago? We wanted friendship, fun, and we wanted craft. These people, particularly Twittering, uh, internet, but they're not having personal contact with people. And that's what WI is about, is, is coming to a meeting, meeting friends, having fun. And I think that's what they're looking for. Are some of the members, as they come in, rather surprised to find themselves 
in the WI? Yes. When we first started, and when we first started mentioning it to people, they were like, oh, you know, my, my mum or my granny was in a WI, I'm not sure that, that's for us. And, um, and we said, well, it's what we make it. At the end of the day, it's, it's our WI, it's what we make of it. We are all sort of of a similar age, or at least of a similar thinking. We all want to learn the same sorts of things. You provide uh, uh, old WI basics, like companionship. Yes, we, I mean, we, you know, we're hoping that we'll get some really good friendships out of this. I love it. <laughs> it's my first time tonight. My mother is a WI member somewhere else, and she's oh, she, all the time, oh, I'm going out for lunch, or I'm going on a trip. So I've said for ages, oh, I wish I could go. And now you're around, so, well, I've learned quite a bit, actually, because I didn't really know anything about self-defence, so, so I have learned a bit, and I'd like to think that I'd have the confidence to do something now, if I was attacked. Well, this is my first time of ever coming, so <laughs> it's been quite uh, quite uh an experience really, a very good one. I try not to have too preconceived ideas about WI. I mean, obviously I've watched Calendar Girls, the film. I have been on a WI, would love for years ago, on a WI trip with a friend of mine, and that was quite fun. I have had fun, it's been great. Got a lot out of tonight. That was the whole point of joining the WI, to do something completely different, um, do it with some friends that I knew and some friends to make as well, so it was really good. And the traditions. The foundations remain ever popular. What is a cake, after all, but something you do for others, for family and friends? A cake is a gift. You never made muffins. Now, what we've done with this recipe is because, to save you all the processes of using different bowls and what have you, we do it all in a jug. Mary Dennis joined the WI when she moved to Neath 12 years ago. She's a teacher in the Get Cooking program, and she shows young mothers how to be stars in the kitchen. And here she's helping women and men who have difficulties with their sight, but very much want to cook. There was an article in this magazine saying that they were looking for enthusiastic home cooks to do the cooking project, and I thought, Yes, I could do that, you know, it's something I, you know, I love cooking, I'm very passionate about cooking. And I think the idea of passing on your cooking skills, you know, to other people is something that I would love to do. I was taught to cook by my mother, I taught my children to cook, but we're not passing this on anymore. And I really feel passionate about it and that's when I got started and I think it's one of the best things I've ever done in WI. We've been shown things I haven't done before, strangely enough. I've never made faggots before, and I've done faggots. I also learned the best way to do potato wedges um, when you're limited, you cut it through, hold it, and cut it through the bridge, and it doesn't slip then, it's, you could be confident. As I'm very poorly sighted, it, it was great to do it that way. I needed to know the shortcuts, and I've done the shortcuts, and they've been better than what I've been doing. Okay. We were given recipe books, you know, the big, big print, and yeah, I've been using those all the time now, you know, instead of the ones I used to use. So yeah, I've done a lot to them. I've done a lot of recipes at home on my own. So it's been really good. Well, I haven't done any cooking really myself, except for you know the ones you take out of the freezer and put straight in the oven. But since I was before I was married, really, so back to the nineteen sixties, so um, used to cook roast dinners and things like that, but I've forgotten all about it and how, it, how we did it and all that. So it was nice to come to this cooking course, yeah, especially with all these lovely ladies. Anyone who moves to an area and, you know, is looking for something to do is one of the best things you can do to join the WI, because you, you meet new people all the time and they're very friendly. Do you think, you know, there's so much going on, so many campaigns, if you want to learn a new craft or, you know, there's so many things you can do. Um, I, I just think it's a really wonderful organisation.
Yes, the WI is a multiplicity of things. A place for skills. A comfort zone, a social club. Hilarity. A little competition. And don't forget the prizes. I can tell you've got and you still get a great deal out of the WI. Mm, absolutely. Um, I just love it, you know, and I want all other women to love it as well because, um, as I said, it's got so much to offer. The young people are what will form the foundation of the future of the WI. The Morgan Federation are uh, celebrating their 90 years this year. The National Federation will celebrate their 100 years in 2015. And the aim by then is to achieve to a quarter of a million members. So you say hooray for the glam girls? We do indeed, yes. And I say I'm really delighted my daughter-in-law is uh, another dinner being a president. The WI, new horizons, self-reliance, self-respect, laughter, a proper company of women. I think that um, they're obviously pleased that, that people of our generation are, um, are coming on board. I mean, there are a lot of the younger generation WIs out there now. And at the end of the day, we are, you know, the next generation. We, we, we will be hopefully in it for years and hopefully in 20 years time, we'll be looking at the next generation following behind us. Almost a century on, the WI remains vigorous and relevant. I think WI stands for Women Inspired. And I haven't had time to talk about Jam in Jerusalem. Next time, disaster at St. Henneth. <laughs> <laughs>